Hello again, this is Jeff Scott, your instructor for the online version of 152-163 Relational Database Design for the Fall 2015 semester at Blackhawk Technical College. We're in the middle of Chapter 5 of 7 in our Access book, and in this chapter, as the roadmap says, we will add fields to the book rep table, enter data into these new fields, create a form for the book rep table, add controls to that form, add a subform to the form. So the main form will be the book rep form and the subform will be the customer's form so we can see the customers for each rep. We'll modify that subform, enhance the form and create queries with the new fields that we'll be talking about, including the new data types. All right. So I'm up to page 269 here. And as the steps show, I'm about to add fields. Okay, so if necessary, let's go back. Back, let's do this. I'm playing with some stuff here. Uh, let's close that. So let's go back to here. And I'm going to do a file close. And I'm going to go back to my desktop and I'm going to copy my chapter 4 database into chapter 5. All right, I'm going to bring that up and I like to always start fresh. So I'm going to get rid of everything that I have in here. So now again, I have only the book rep and the customer tables. So I want to open up the book rep table. And I think you already know this, but in case you don't, I can double click it if I want to do that. I can right mouse click on it and choose open. Or I can right mouse click on it and choose design view, which is what I typically do. All right. So that's step one on the bottom of page 269. In step two, we're to tap or click design view to go into design view. And we want to go down and underneath bonus rate, we're going to want to add four new fields. Those are sales goal, which is a yes no field, comment, which is a long text field, picture, which is an OLE object field, and customer notes which is an attachment field. All right. Now, we haven't done this, but really, you know, unique identifier, okay, let, let's say book reps last name. It's just a good idea to get in there and start to comment things. And the time to comment things is when you're putting the information in. It's not to say that, like I'm doing it here, that you come back later and do it. Do I have to do this? Does it make it, the program run any better? You could actually make a case to say that it makes the program run a little slower because as you keep adding comments in, it does slow down processing speed. All right, but I still think this is a good idea. Again, the program isn't working any better because I did that, but I just felt better myself doing it. All right. So, let's see. 
now it sounds like we they want us to come in here and in between the postal code and the start date we are to put our mouse right here click on the side we put the pink border around it hit the insert key and add a phone number field that phone number field will be of type short text all right and we're going to put the input mask in here for the phone number so it says tap or click the build button to use a wizard to enter the input mask so if I click on the ellipsis here it says you must save the table first sure we'll save it phone number that's exactly what we want notice there is a social security number there is a zip code etc there's quite a few things in here all right so that's the one I want so I'm going to click next I don't need to try it all right I'm just going to accept all of the defaults it says how do you want to store the data do you want to store the data the way it looks or do you want to store it like this without the parens the space and the dashes let's see what they tell us to do in here all right we don't need to change the mask so I've done the first three steps the ones on 271 on four says be sure that without the symbols in the mask like this option is selected so without the symbols that it is tap or click next and finish boom and it put it in for us so you'll notice when we come in here now and we go back into the book rep table in data sheet view all right as we start to look at the information that's in here and as they start to put in a phone number boom and it only it, it really normally would show over here but it showed over here because that's where I happen to click but it's already formatted now so we see that information we see the sales goal information which will be a check mark the comment and the picture so all of the information that we wanted to add is indeed added in there now if we wanted to add it in here all right They talk about adding fields in data sheet view on pages 272 and 273. And it says here what? Somewhere in here, let's see, enable content. Uh, I didn't want to do that. I think I just removed that. Uh, that's back. Oh, I want to be in data sheet view. Well, you'll notice if I click the more button here, there's a bunch of stuff. I can play with row, row height, I can hide fields, freeze fields, which means that, for instance, if I wanted to keep going along the side of the page here, but I wanted the customer name, let's say, to always show. I could freeze that field, so as I kept moving, that field would stay on the screen, that kind of thing. All right. data should be in here someplace there there should be a thing in here to add let us add fields in here also where it says more fields but I do not see it right now it says in data sheet view you can rename fields do all the goodies okay It is in here I just don't see it right now again I would recommend always being in design mode when you add new fields 
All right, especially if you want to come in here and start playing with the different requirements that you have in your window down there. So, open the book rep table and close the navigation pane. So, we'll go back into data sheet view and we'll close the navigation pane. And we want to set the phone number for our first because I don't want that. I want the book rep table. All right. So I can come in here, set the phone number for my first book rep, and it looks like I want to set this to 610. Notice I immediately move to the next field, 555-2436. Okay, so that one's done. And the other ones are shown here in step three on page 275. So I'm going to go down to the next field, or the next record, I should say, and that's 201 555 1279. Go down to the next record, and that is 215 555. 8658 and go down to the last fourth and last record and that's 610-555-5762 all right so that's what we've been asked to add in there okay so then we're supposed to go over to the yes no field which is right here that's our sales goal and we want to tap or click the checkbox for the first record, meaning they've met their goal. And it doesn't say anything for the other three, so it looks as though Melina Perez is the only one who has met, uh, who has met her goal. All right, go to the comment field, and we want to type in here, For the first record, fluent in Spanish and Portuguese. You won't see all of it in here, of course. Bachelor's degree in Spanish and secondary education. All right, go down to the second record. Senior Sales Representative transferred to new division to mentor other book reps. Go down to the third, and that should be fluent in Japanese. learning Arabic excels at public speaking finally for the fourth record taught English for two years in Russia expert at at teaching instructors how to use language materials. All right, so that's all the, the stuff that we were asked to do to enter the long text. So I first went in and did the input mask, then I put in the phone numbers. After the phone numbers, I put in the yes, no field, but just for Melina Perez, because she's the only one who's met her goal. Then I went to 276 and I added the long text into all four of the fields, okay? All right, next, we're told that if we want to, we can drag the right edge of the field selector for the comment field to resize it to the approximate size. Well, I can keep doing this if I need to. And as I make it wider and wider, I see more information, that's fine. 
I can also drag down on this if I want to do so. All right, so I can drag down on a record. I don't want to do either of those. That's fine. They're fine the way they are. So I can drag down here if I want to do that. All right, maybe that would look a little nicer if I drag down. So It's a short table, so there shouldn't be really any kind of a uh, hardship. Now it looks like you can see everything for everybody. Okay? All right, that's steps one and two on page 277. It says if we want to undo those changes, we can basically, we can come back here and move it up, or we can right mouse click and it says press and hold or right click on the row selector and tap or click row height on the shortcut menu. Okay. There it is. If I want standard height again, boom, now they're all back. We'll leave them there for now. Okay, time to enter the OLE object fields. That's the picture, so we're right here. So to insert data into an OLE object field, you use the insert object command on the OL field, OLE fields, remember object linking and embedding, field shortcut menu. If the object is already created and stored in a file, you could choose to insert it directly from that file. All right, I'm going to have to make sure I've got all that information, so give me just a second here. All right, I want to go back, and I don't think I have it right here, but I do have it on, on my H drive. Which should be clean because it's very, very dirty. Student data files. I don't think those are actually the ones that we'll need, but let's see. Yeah, they are. Okay, so let's bring that information. I'll just copy that folder over here, and I'm responsible for making sure all that information is available to you as well. All right, I'll have to go back and do that, and I will. All right, so ensure that the picture field appears on your screen. It does. and then press and hold or right click the picture field for the first menu to produce a shortcut menu. That's step one. In step two, tap or click the insert object on the shortcut menu. That displays the Microsoft Access dialog box that you see on the screen and in figure 519 on page 279. Select the bitmap object, image object from the type list. It says here if we tap or click the OK button that what will happen is we will, well, let's do it. Tap or click the OK button to open paint. There it is. Step three. Tap or click the paste button arrow, home tab, clipboard group. To display the paste menu. Tap or click the paste from command to paste a picture. All right, this is on my desktop, and it is in a folder that's called Chapter 5, and there's our people, and we want, I believe, Molina Perez. Yes, we do. So there it is. Tap or click the File tab in the Paint application.
You have to click exit and return to the document in the book rep to insert the picture. Exit and return to document. There, the picture should be in there. Okay. You don't see the actual picture right now. So let's insert the remaining pictures. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to right mouse click on here. First, let's get the names. So that was Melina Perez. Then it's Michael Statnick, Robert Chin and Tracy Rogers, Statnick, Chin, and Rogers. Those should all be put in, but that's the step on page 280. To enter data into the attachment fields. All right, we want to insert data into the attachment fields. So we have to use the Manage Attachments command on the atta attachment fields shortcut menu. So this is our attachment field here. We'll right mouse click and we go to Manage Attachments. At steps one and two, tap or click the Add button. Navigate to the folder with your attachments, which again was at my desktop under CH or Chapter 5. All right. And we have to find Molina Perez potential customers. Well, there's customers. There's Marina Perez potential customers right there. So, tap or click Marina Perez customers, that's the one they want us to do first. And then tap or click the open button. Click the add button again and put in Marina Perez potential customers, which is the Excel file. All right, so we've added the two attachments. Then we want to do the same thing for, what was it again? It was Michael, Robert, so it's Statnick, Chin, and Rogers. In fact, I think it was by first name. So it's Michael, Robert, and Tracy. Attach the Robert Chin second. Okay, so that's let's cancel that. Let's move over to here. Manage attachments, add, and this is Robert Chin. Potential customers. The second and fourth records have no attachments, so open. Okay, so we've added one. So these are the steps on pages 280 and 281. If your database contained a hyperlink field, you would insert that now. We don't have one, so we're not going to worry about that. So I'm up to page 282. Just want to double check and make sure. Okay. All right. Although pictures do not appear on the screen, you can view them within the table. To view the picture of a particular book rep, press and hold or right-click 
on the picture field for the book rep. Well, tap to view the picture of a book rep, press and hold or right click the picture field for the book rep. like that. Although pictures do not appear on the screen, you can view them within the table. To view the picture of a particular book rep, press and hold or right click the picture field for the book rep. You can view the attachments by pressing and holding and right clicking. All right, so we can view those also. For some reason, I'm not able to see this, but it'll be there. I'm not worried about it in the least. All right, with the additional fields in place, Bavant Publishing Management is ready to incorporate data from both the book rep and the customer tables into a single form. So let's save the table and let's close the table. All right, again, all we have in here right now are the book rep table and the customers table. Okay, so we're going to create a form in design view. So we've got our navigation page open. I'm clicking create here and I'm going to open up the create tab and that's step one. Tap or clip the form design button right here. Now we're in design mode. Close the navigation pane now. All right, there we go. If a field does not appear, if the field list does not appear, tap or click the Add Existing Fields button, which is under Form Design Tools Design. There it is. You can also take this, drag it over, and make it wider now. Okay, there we go. To place a control for a field on a form, drag the field from the field list to the desired position. The following steps place the book rep number on the form. So if necessary, tap or expand the indicator for the book reps table to display the fields. Drag the book rep number field from the list to the table in the approximate position shown. And it looks like book rep number, I think we want the book from the book rep table. We want that right around three. So about there is what it looks like. On the bottom of the page, there's a little Q&A. It says, do I have to be exact? No, make sure you're just in the right general location. All right. So what I want to do is I want to make, I want to add the additional controls as shown in figure 530 that's on page 285. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm not going to pause or anything, but I'm just going to add the information as it's shown there. This is where it gets, for lack of better words, real hinky. You want to make sure you've got them both selected so if you decide you want to move things around a little bit, you're able to do so. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be fine once we get going. So now the last name, I'm going to put down below that. Oops, yeah.
All right, this is actually much easier than the way it used to be. It may not look like it to you, but it really and truly is. It's, uh, it's I think, improved a little bit. Phone number. We want these right here to line up pretty well, so. There's a way to split this so that I'm only moving one and not moving them both. I'm trying to remember what that was. That may have been it right there. All right, so it's again, it's coming to play place a little bit. Uh, then we want the salary, bonus rate, start date. It. Salary, bonus rate, and start date. Again, the more you do this, the more natural it becomes and the easier it is for you to work with. Okay, and start date. It's getting there, like I said. Finally, we want sales goal in here also, and we want that to be down a little bit further. Down around here, it looks like. Again, not perfect, but coming to be. If you do something and you make a mistake, you can always undo it when you get done. All right? So I'm on page 286 and I'm about to align the controls on the left and align the controls for the top and vertical spacing. All right, so again, then I'll add the additional controls. Okay, There's enough to do in here. All right. You can use one of two methods to choose multiple controls. One way is to use the ruler. If you tap or click the position on the horizontal ruler, you will select all the controls for which a portion of the control is under that position in the ruler. Similarly, you can tap or click a position in the vertical ruler and you will select all the controls. The second way is to select the first control by tapping or clicking it then select all the other co controls by hold, excuse me, holding down on the shift key while tapping or clicking the control. That's the one that I'm going to use. So we want to select the first name, last name, and phone numbers and drag them so that their left edges line up. So these controls right here. Okay, in fact, before we do that, let's draw this. This is called lassoing, and I'm going to move all that stuff over just a tad. All right, now I'm going to grab all of this Click here, shift, click, shift, click. All right, and I want their left edges to line up. Okay, and I want all of that to show, so I'll have to do it again. So now first name, last name, all of that shows, good, all right. And I'm going to do something they don't show in the book, but I think it looks a little bit nicer. I'm going to click on here, then I'm going to just click on here and just move that one so it's very close. All right, and then do the same thing with the last name. In fact, I'm going to leave about one set of dots between them. Make 
these the same size or approximately then do the same thing with the phone number here I'll just drape this over all right Again, it's looking, to, in my mind, or in my opinion, to be a little bit more professional looking than it was before. All right, now the other thing I can do, if I want to on this, is if I, if I do happen to make these all the same size, okay? And that's the goal here. In fact, let's do it this. We'll do them one at a time. You may or may not have noticed this, but what happens on these is they automatically get left justified. So if I go to the Home tab, thought it would be under Home. All right, well, you can write Justify. Let's see. Form properties? I don't know. There's probably somewhere in there a justification property. All right, but there is a way that I can I can write a line all of these. I wish I remembered what it was. Let's click our way through here and see if we see it. You may or may not agree with what I'm doing here and as far as what it looks like, etc. I'm doing the best I can to try to make this look, for lack of better words, as professional as I possibly can. It's not going to look great. Again, it's like any other skill. The more you work with it, the better you get at it. And until you've worked with it and done some work with it, you're not going to be that all that great at it. All right, And I'm proving that right now. All right, again, it's getting there where it's not looking too bad. Then I want to do the same thing with the salary. I want to add, I want to line these up. And I'm going to want to line these up. Again, that's pretty close right there. I'll grab these and line those up. And as we did before, I will write a line here. So again, if I want to, I can take those headings and I can bold them. I can do a lot of different things if indeed that's what I want to do. All right, it's looking pretty good as far as steps one, two, and three on pages 286 and 287. Okay, now adjust controls on the top and adjust vertical spacing. So, they want us to it looks like what they're going to want is the first name and the last name those headings to be above the first name and last name alright so we want first name basically the heading up here and then we want to put last name next to it all right, then salary, okay? So there's a lot of ways to do this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this, and I'm just going to drag it down for right now. And then I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to do the same thing, okay, just so it's out of the way a little bit. All right? Now I want to take first name and last name and put them next to one another, and then have salary. So salary I'm going to bring over here. And then I'm going to grab the heading and place it, I'm going to actually place it right there. All right, and then take this and put it underneath. Oh, they don't want it like that. They want salary to be to the side. Okay, let's, let's follow the steps. So first name, first name, last name, last name. Okay, so that's, I've actually got it looking, I think, the way that it's supposed to look up a tad. 
There's first name and last name. Good. Salary. I was mis I misspoke. That should be right here. All right, that's looking good. Phone number underneath that. And that's looking pretty good. All right. Start date. And bonus rate. All right, so salary should actually this right here. This should be moved over to here. Right. There's bonus rate, and we want bonus rate and salary. We want these to line up. Like I said, you can see by taking a quick look at this that it's. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's a lot of fun because it really isn't. But after you do it, like I said, for a while, it's not bad either. When I get done, I'm sure that it, it uh, could be much improved. All right, it won't look at all perfect, but it won't look bad either. Okay, like I said, it's getting there, as you can see. All right, let's move this sales goal up a little bit move that out okay so we've got BR and here we've got book rep number so let's let's just take a look In fact let's save this because you should be saving often so I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna call this CH5 it's going to eventually be a multi form so I'm gonna call it multi multi form that's fine all right, but I want to see is if I go back into layout view, that's the way it looks right now. So does that look great? No, it looks okay though. All right, so you can see this is what I've done, all right, by going, oops, by going in here, that's what I've created so far, okay? All right. So I've kind of done the stuff that's on page 288, and now they want us to add the controls for the remaining fields. So I'm going to do that right now. Now before I do, it looks like I might be a little pressed for space because I still have to add the picture and something underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this stuff, and I'm going to move it at one time over further this way, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. and this okay and I'll even move this stuff over a little bit all right now I'll be able to I should be able to come in here and put in my comment and my picture fields okay that's adding the additional controls as shown on page 289 I'm gonna do that I'm gonna add the title and then when I get to page 292 I'm going to stop this particular lecture. So drag the control for the common field from the field list to its approximate position. Uh, let's see. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Pretty sheet. I had to click the Add Existing Fields, and I want to bring in the comments. Mine won't look the same size as what's in the book. I'm just telling you that right now. All right. First thing I want to do is grab just the thing that says Comment, and I want to put it above because that's what they're showing here. Okay, so that's done. Then I want to grab the comment, move it over, 
and I'm going to flatten this out quite a bit here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I widened out my form a lot more than I meant to. so you can see how wide it is now and I did not want that so I'm going to narrow that and narrow it again to about there that should be pretty good all right so I've now put in my comment field if, uh, if I really want to be anal about this I can move the actual comment itself up and then move this up so that these pretty much line up still not perfect it's not going to be. So I can put it there, and if I have to, I can widen it out even more than that down on the bottom there. All right. Then I want to also add the picture field. So I'm going to drag that down here. There it says picture. I want the title to go up above the picture. Let's line it up somewhat with the word that says comment. And then I want the picture. go underneath it okay again not perfect but not terrible either so it looks like the picture will have to be widened quite a bit so let's do that we'll make it about the same width as where it says comment as the comment is and we'll pull this down Now, let's save. Always a good thing to do. Again, you can't save too much. There it is. So it's coming. It's coming to be. So there's our first record. Let's look at all four. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Okay. So let's go back into design view. This looks like it's now a little bit too big, so I'm going to take the width and cut it down a bit save it and now look at it one more time that looks better that one's a little smaller but it still is okay all right looks looking looking okay all right all right use the shortcut menu to change the fill or back color So they want us to get over here, it looks like about, right mouse click, 0.2 to fill back, the fill back color arrow, tap or click the gray color, row 3, column 1. And that changed the back color to gray. And finally, let's add a title. All right. And once we add a title, before I go into the subform stuff, which is next, and there's quite a bit of it. All right. So before we go into that, we'll stop this particular lecture and start another one. All right. Be sure that the form design tools tab is chosen. It is. Go to the header footer group. All right. Go to title. All right, you can see what it's called. They want this to be called Book Rep Master Form. So, Book Rep Master Form. All right. Let's take one more look at it. Let's save it, and then we'll stop this particular lecture. So. It's coming to coming into the place, I think. It's looking pretty good right now. All right, not perfect at all, but it, these things are always a work in progress. Okay? So, again, I'm going to go back into design mode. I'm going to save, and I'm going to stop this and start another lecture.